Hello. I love everything that we've covered today. <laughs> I'm absorbing it. I would love to just touch a little bit upon relationships. I'm finding myself um, seeing results in real time to do with birds and feathers <laughs> often, but I find myself hesitant when I'm faced with people. Well, what we've been talking about here today is primarily about your relationship with your inner being and with your vibrational reality, because that's the first step. Once you understand that relationship and you've got a handle on it, then all other relationships will be comfortable and pleasurable. But most humans who don't have a handle on this, in other words, we're just right here on the leading edge. And even you discovered new things about it even today. So it's an evolving state of being for sure. But most humans are not tending to the relationship with who they really are. So they are not consistently under the influence of source. And so they are under the influence of something else. And so most humans have the habit, the belief, the expectation, the practiced vibration of watching the behavior of others in order to acknowledge how they're doing. So it's attention from others that they crave rather than allowing themselves to be under the influence of who they really are. And then the behavior of others is a big part of what's going on in their vibration. You just can't watch something without forming an opinion about it. And if the opinion that you form when you're watching other humans or when you're striving for the attention of other humans, when that supersedes your awareness of your connection with source, then you're sort of out of control. Sometimes you get both, but you've got to give up your craving for attention of others. It has to become irrelevant to you what they think about you because they're not prepared to see you. They're under the influence of what their mother thought, or they're under the influence of their whatever. And so you just can't count on anybody else. This was the clearest thing that Esther ever came to understand about this. Once her Jerry made his transition into non-physical, they had a long-standing relationship. They were together for over 30 years. And during that time, they were together all the time, all day, all night, every day, every night. In other words, they were really getting along well. Esther would not admit to any moments that weren't wonderful. There might have been some, but she can't remember them. As far as she was concerned, it was lovely, 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 lovely. And then when he made his transition, she was really distressed because she connects with us so easily, but she couldn't find him. She suffered over it for a while. And one day when she stumbled accidentally into a clear space where she could hear us, you can only stand so much grieving. Pretty soon your mind just sort of times out. She heard us say, look for him where he is, not where he was. And it startled Esther because she didn't realize that there would be a vibrational difference between him where he was and him where he is because she knows he's in a perfect place now and she would not admit that he wasn't always in a perfect place. So she was not willing to even acknowledge that there could be a vibrational variance between Jerry and the physical and Jerry and the non-physical. Well, this is what we're asking you all to acknowledge about everybody you know. There's your friend in the physical and there's your friend in the non-physical. And the thing that confused Esther is that Jerry was so often tuned in, tapped in, turned on to his inner being that he was often all of that. In other words, Jerry in the physical was very often like Jerry in the non-physical, just not always. But Esther was not looking for him there. She was missing where he was. She was looking at the lack of him. He wasn't across the dinner table and he wasn't in the bed and he wasn't walking down the hall and he wasn't taking the walks. He wasn't driving the bus and he wasn't helping with anything. And so it took her a little while to adjust to the inner being aspect as compared to the physical aspect. So that's what you got to do with everybody in relationships. You've got to look for who they really are, not who they're being. And what most everybody's doing is needing who they're being to be something different so that I can feel better because my inner being sees who you really are, but you're not acting like that right now. And while my inner being has the ability to see your potential, I don't because I'm tuned to who you're being because I've been basing how I feel on your behavior, on your actions, on your attention to me, which is not a good idea.
because other people are not wired to please you they fake it at first <laughs> everybody fakes it at first they try to appear compatible they pretend that you are the most important thing in the world to them but you can never be their connection to their inner being must be the most important thing in the world to them and to you so to say it otherwise or to believe it otherwise puts you at a disadvantage because now you're sort of like a bobbing cork on a raging sea and you don't have much control where once you connect with who you really are then it's easier now that's the basis that's the story morning glory so now what do you want to talk about that was Jerry's words Jerry said to Esther what's the story morning glory and what he meant was tell me the good news and only the good news <laughs> only want the good news only the good news